presents Eveland Access Summerfest Music by the River 2024. June 1st from noon to 10 p.m. Featuring eight musical artists with live music, activities like bingo, sand volleyball, and cornhole, food, and much, much more. It's a free event at the Eveland Access Campgrounds at 2890 Galston Avenue, Oskaloosa. Bring a friend and have a lot of fun at the Eveland Access Summerfest 2024 Music by the River. June 1st from noon to 10 at the Eveland Access Campgrounds. And it is time for the sports section live from Brothers Market here in downtown Sigourney on a Saturday morning located at 118 South Main Street in Sigourney. Give them a call at 641-622-2191. Make sure you download the Brothers Market digital app for all the great deals. Let's check in with Jenny Hobbs for the beginning of our show. Jenny, how you doing this morning? Good deal. Just waiting for the rain. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> uh, hey, sports fans. I'll just do a quick, the week that was, I didn't get my homework done. So, uh, uh, But this week we had sickle golf. We had sickle track meet. Congratulations to the EV girls on their big win on a track meet that took two days because of the rain. Um, and then we will say next week, uh, coming up is all the big sectionals and districts, and so good luck to all area athletes as they try to qualify for state. Um, the other big happening, which was just last night, was Caitlin Clark's much-anticipated WNBA uh, debut, and let's just say she did not disappoint. So uh, um, she put up some really good numbers, and so I'm excited because I know I have bought the WNBA um, – pass so I can watch all the games because um, I guess I can't get a ticket now so uh, I guess I'll just watch it on TV so there you go Steve the week that was all right while we uh, transition between segments here let's do take a look at our athlete of the week it's brought to us by Keokuk County Hospital and Clinics and as voted on by you guys here on Steve Shetler Media Facebook we have HLVTC tracks Aaliyah Cooper Congratulations to Aaliyah. She was voted our Athlete of the Week, the second HLVTC athlete in a row to be voted our Athlete of the Week. And then our Team of the Week, brought to us by Kelly Style at State Farm Insurance in Oskaloosa, uh, Montezuma Girls Golf. Uh, voted our team of the week. So uh, they had a great week here a couple of weeks ago. Montezuma Girls Golf and Aliyah Cooper, our team of the week and athlete of the week here on Steve Shuttler Media. Now, uh, Jenny Hobbs, you have uh, a much anticipated <laughs> guest this week. We've got Gina Rogers, uh, former Sigourney athlete and uh, gone on to do some great broadcasting things. Take it away, guys. Gina, welcome. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh my God! Yeah, this is this is big deal here, sports fans. This is huge. Okay. Um, anyway, just let's just start from the very beginning. Uh, tell us about your background, how you grew up, all those sorts of things. Well, um, I'm originally from Alabama, so I was born in oh, Alabama, cool. and the my family moved here to Sigourney in '65, and so I did all my schooling here in, in Sigourney and, you know, spent a lot of time at the pool. I was kind of a pool rat in the summer. Uh, and uh, so that was also my first job. And then I also worked at s and Shoe Store here on the square in Sigourney oh. for years. Started there when I was in high school. So um, that was fun and just, you know, great memories of growing up in Sigourney. Lots of opportunities we had then. Uh, so what sports did you play in high school? So in high school, I, I, did softball for a year and then I decided I didn't like being hot and sweaty and dirty um, cool. thus the pool thing <laughs> um, and so I played basketball oh yeah, yeah. I was a cheerleader uh, one year but mainly basketball was my thing so who is your basketball coach here at Sigourney okay so let me think back <laughs> here we had a couple of them so um, uh, ran, uh, Mike Mateer oh gosh one year yes. Russ Bennett Okay. Uh, we had Mr. Norton, for those that might remember Mr. Norton. Um, but uh, when I was a junior and senior, our varsity coach was Bob Howard. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, another guest with some Bob Howard stories. <laughs> oh, my favorite one is, is people <laughs> ask me exactly what yeah. you did, who was your coach in high school. Mm -hmm. And I just laugh and I just say, well, you know, 
he was the football coach, you know, I mean, cause you know, of course Bob Howard is a legendary football coach mm-hmm. in Iowa. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to discredit his, his basketball coaching <laughs> skills, but he was the football coach. <laughs> that's, that's all I got to say. When we had coach Howard in uh, as a guest back in December, I did ask coach, uh, if anybody, if he knew of anybody that had kept the bottom of the bleacher that he always kicked when he yes. got mad, and mm-hmm. he didn't, he yeah. didn't know where that bleacher ended. Yes, up. I very much remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably had to be replaced a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what are you currently doing? So, um, I have a full full time gig. I worked for MCI, Verizon for over twenty years. So, I'm, that's still my full time gig. Um, but I'm also a public address announcer and mostly now I work for the University of Iowa and for USA Volleyball. Uh, So those are my two main gigs right now. Um, And just announcing, I used to do TV and and radio, but I kind of stopped doing that. So where, where do you announce USA Volleyball at? So USA Volleyball, I work for, um, the, I do their junior national championships. So this will be my third year. So the first year was in Indianapolis. Uh, second year was in Chicago. And this year's in Vegas. So, <laughs> uh, and it's a huge deal for volleyball people. Mm-hmm. I'm, yep. I'm sure you're well, well aware of it. Um, but there are just thousands of, of kids. Uh, I think in Chicago, there were 82 courts. Uh, it was at McCormick Place, so everybody knows that's a huge mm-hmm. convention center, and it was full. So it's really fun to see the, you know, young, upcoming talent. And Iowa is always very well represented. Yes. Um, uh, I only do the gold medal matches, and so we have different gold medal matches at different age groups and different divisions. Uh, but I know in Indianapolis two years ago, two of my gold medal matches featured Iowa teams. And I know a kid on that team. So mm-hmm. that was pretty uh, Jovi Evans yeah. from Mid Prairie. Uh, that's awesome. So how did you get into public announcing, public address announcing? How did that all shake out? All right. Here's okay. the story. Okay. All right. Let's come okay. Here we go. Um, so I was an assistant basketball coach at Cedar Rapids, Washington. Okay. Paul and, James? Uh, under Paul James, exactly. Yep. And I had met Ryan Schlater <laughs> from... <laughs> well, we got some stories about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> from WMT Radio. And Ryan had actually gotten me into radio with him, doing some color commentary on the radio. So after my coaching s- certificate expired and I didn't <laughs> renew it, um, I was sitting in the stands one night at a wash ball game. And the athletic director at the time, Denny Gettle said came up to me and said hey we don't have a pa announcer for friday would you ever consider doing that and i'm like you know all right sure i can do it i can speak in a microphone no problem (laughs) and i know basketball so yeah yeah. so i did it and and then it just caught on from there i started doing all the wash games and then i did multiple sports and then i started getting calls from other schools and then a friend in another school got me in at state volleyball Mm -hmm. and then once i started doing state volleyball then they got me in at state basketball and then that's where i met the guy from the university of iowa and then that's just so just it's you know who you know and and you never know who's listening kind of thing (laughs) okay so let's talk about ryan for a second ryan schlater (laughs) so in 2000 when 2002 when the Mid Prairie Girls won yep. state, I was lucky enough to do his color mm-hmm. for those games, and he, I don't know if I did permanent damage to him, <laughs> but the state championship game was close, mm-hmm. and we had to hit Mid Prairie had to hit a game-winning shot. So I mean, we were standing up at I mean it was still at Vets. Oh, it's so and you know room. the yeah. little. Yes, I don't know. Little they were like overhang things. Yes, or something. you were like, yeah. and I was always afraid that I was gonna yes crash it down. Yes, but I'm like hitting up, <laughs> you know, trying not to get too excited on the radio. Um, but anyway, that was fun, and I've known Ryan a long time. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> he's he's a character. He is a character, and we I worked with Ryan for probably. 20 some years um, on and off doing color. I was his color commentary person um, on radio. And then we started working um, KCRG 9.2 TV games. And we did those for several years too. So been to a lot of high school gymnasiums with Mr. Schlater over the years. (laughs) So what is your, let's, let's talk about what's your favorite to do. 
Um, well, you know, it used to. It, I used to think color commentary was my favorite, mm-hmm. but then I really think PA announcing yeah. is my favorite. Um, basketball is certainly my favorite sport, but I tell you, I've become very, very. I really like field hockey. I do Iowa oh. field hockey, and um, of course, it's not something we have here at the yep. high school level in Iowa. Uh, and when I started doing it, I told them, I said, you know, I've never seen a field hockey game ever. Yeah. And they're like, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. OK. Um, so they taught me and now I'm hooked. It's yeah. it's I would encourage anyone um, to come out. I'm going to put in a plug. Mm-hmm. The The season is uh, starts in August and usually ends in November. Um, the games are all free. And the field hockey pitch in Iowa City is kind of across from Iowa City West. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so uh, over there by the recreation center. And I tell you, it's it's a beautiful facility. It's got a lot of history with um, Dr. Grant, Dr. Christine Grant. It's named the field is the pitch is named after her. Um, the team is great. It's the it's the only women's Iowa women's team that's ever won uh, an NCAA title. And we're always in the top four. I was going to say, five. yes. Yeah. And these, they're amazing athletes. I have, field hockey is so fast. They're constantly running. Um, it's, it's kind of like hockey, kind of like soccer. Um, but I, I love it. And I, the games are free. Um, Friday late evenings are Saturdays around noon. If you have a chance to come out, I, I guarantee you, you won't regret it. How big is the ball? Is it like a softball or is it even smaller? Um, I would call it. It's smaller than a softball, um, bigger than a baseball, and they're hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. yeah. They're hard. They're hard. So, how many Iowa women's basketball games have you done? Well, I've been doing. I'm the so I'm the backup PA announcer. Okay. So I'm not the full time gig. Many of you know probably mm-hmm. Dave Gallagher, who is the the full time guy, one of the biggest Hawkeye fans in the world, <laughs> I think. Um, but I'm the backup. So whenever. Dave is not available, I jump in. So this past year, I did three games. Good. Um, and then kind of over the past couple of years, it's usually been one or two. Okay. Um, I'd love the full-time gig, but I'm pretty sure that Dave's not going to give it up. So. Oh, God, no, <laughs> I would not give it up. Yeah. So what's your favorite story from any of your announcing? What's your favorite story? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, there's, there's tons of good ones. I mean, there's obviously the mistakes I've made. I've always <laughs> told those. Um, but, um, you know, for me, it's probably being the first woman to do something at each venue or for each sport. Um, I like, I like breaking that ceiling. And as I like to say, I want to open the door and let others come in. Um, so that's probably it. I know I was the first woman to announce, um, at, at Carver Hawkeye Arena and awesome. the game. Um, I was the first woman to ever do football at Kingston Stadium in Cedar oh. Rapids. Um, so I love that. Uh, I'm also told I was the first woman for um, high school or high, state volleyball. Okay. Uh, which, which I think is crazy. I do. I agree. I agree. <laughs> so there's just a lot of those firsts. Mm-hmm. But again, I don't want to just be the first and only. Mm-hmm. I want to be the first that walked through the door and now I'm holding it open for everyone else. Awesome. Good. And I, you know... We talked earlier about Title 19 and uh, Title 9 and uh, why did I say 19? Anyway, and um, when I played at Iowa State, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Iowa State women's basketball this year, and I played 30 years ago. It's like so I felt like yeah, you know, you, you, in perspective, you're like, a, you know, kind of like a pioneer almost. Absolutely. And I am so proud that you know women are still you know, breaking the ceiling and opening the doors. Yes. Um, And I think, you know, that that's just amazing. Yeah, I agree. I, I, and by the way, just speaking of, you know, Iowa state, um, you know, Karen Gerard here from Sigourney was on the, one of the first basketball teams at Iowa state. Yeah. Yeah. And I made contact with her after that article uh, they wrote about her. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is the coolest thing. And I'm going to, I'm sorry. I forget the name, but I, this year at uh, state basketball. So I still do the state basketball hall of fame induction ceremony. Oh, yes. And we inducted one of Karen's teammates uh, into the hall of fame this year. And oh. so that was just really cool. Like you said, to see, you know, those pioneers and, you know, yeah, we've got, you know, more work to do, but I'm very proud of our history and I'm very proud of, you know, we just keep fighting. Yeah. And I'm proud of in Iowa, especially small town, Iowa, where we've had six on six basketball, you know, since, 
the turn of the century. Yeah. I mean, we were a very a progressive Absolutely. state and, you know, they might have been playing in skirts, but they sold out vets yep. more than the guys did. Yep. I'm very proud of that. And I don't know. I mean, I certainly got one. But when Ray Gun came out with that, I played six on six T-shirt. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think I I think I hit buy before it was like <laughs> 10 seconds old on <laughs> online. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. And I, of course, I bought one and said, bring back the big eight. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as uh, I sit here in my big was 10, saying, big 15, right. whatever it is now. Oh, I know. Ooh. Yeah. That's going to be crazy. Um, so if you had dream gig, any announcing job anywhere, what would it be? Well, it's, it's more venues maybe okay. than it is particular teams. Um, I'd love to go to Madison Square Garden. I'd love oh. to have my voice there um i think that would be a big one i'm a huge kansas city chiefs fan and have oh. been for many 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 years <laughs> so um arrowhead oh, would be cool yes. um but you know just it just having a female voice in a major football stadium mm -hmm. i think would be huge whether it be at kinnick whether it be at bryant denny mm -hmm. whether it be you know at the you know at the big house at michigan anywhere whether it's my voice or another female voice, mm -hmm. that is the thing. Cool. Super Bowl. Let's, yeah. let's dream big. Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah, Super Bowl or, or you know, uh, so the PA announcing world, especially for women, is kind of small. And so one of my friends, Jamie Coffey, she's the one who does the Women's Final Four. Okay. She also has done, um, she did a game for the 49ers, San Francisco 49ers. Oh. She also did a Giants game recently. And she used to do the... Um, why I'm just blanking. What's the West Coast Conference that's dissolving? Pac-12. The Pac-12. She did the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament. Nice. Yeah. So so that kind of stuff is is what's making me very very happy. I was thinking with USA ba or volleyball. Do you think you'll get it announced at the Olympics when it comes to LA? I tell you, it that's that's a bucket list <laughs> item. Um, and in and, and I don't know for volleyball because vo I'll just admit volleyball is not my top tier sport. I love it, but it's not there. But USA field hockey. Oh yeah. Um, they qualified for the Paris Olympics this year, and it's so exciting for me to see names that I've announced mm -hmm. and coaches that I know uh -huh. that are going to be at the Olympics. That was that's huge. But yeah. A, I actually renewed my passport last year just in case I would get a last minute call because you never know. never know. And I didn't want lack of passport <laughs> yes. being the reason I couldn't go. Yeah. So um, so I have it in my pocket and that would be awesome. <laughs> so uh, secret to success. So there's uh, there's girls out there that women that uh, really want to get into the radio world, TV world. Um, what advice do you want to give them? Say yes. Just say yes. You don't have to be qualified. You don't have to be have 500 years of experience. You just have to say yes. Mm -hmm. So and, and make yourself out there and be assertive. I think that's one thing we as women don't always do is we accept what we're given mm -hmm. um, and, and say thank you. And we need to be aggressive, be assertive, go for what you want, make it known um, and then tell everybody. You know, networking, as we've talked about, is so incredibly important. And so if you have a dream, if there's anybody watching that wants to get into PA announcing, hit me up because I would be happy to mentor you. I am mm -hmm. always trying to get women um, into the role. If you, you don't have to know everything about a sport. Like I said, field yeah. hockey, I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but just don't be afraid to say yes. And I think, true. And I think being assertive, pretty sure my first time doing color uh, for KCII with Ryan and whoever else was there, it's changed a lot. I called and said, hey, I'm not coaching currently mm -hmm. or do you want somebody? Because I knew the team that I was playing and I felt that I could give. Because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you listen and you're just like, ooh, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, I feel I could do better. Yes, yeah. So, you know, so you, put your, you do put yourself out there. Um, and then afterwards, I say we always look to improve. Absolutely. Uh, so Just like I, anything. Yeah. So I, you know, I talked to my sister and say, well, hey, what do you think? And she goes, well, you know, stop saying right here or, you know, you, we need to get a stop right here. Well, yeah. <laughs> just say we need to get a stop. I mean, 
That's anyway. good because you don't always get feedback. Yeah. And so asking for feedback mm -hmm. and then something I always did is I would rewatch. So a lot of my games, if they were, you know, televised, I'd go back and rewatch them and, and critique myself because we're obviously hardest on ourselves. Oh, yes. Always. Um, but go back and critique yourself. And then, like you said, it's like anything else. It's practice mm -hmm. and getting better and saying yes. <laughs> okay. So, of course, we have to talk about what is your signature um call you know like you know like let's say iowa state football or said that's another cyclone and then you let the whole crowd go first down yeah or you know like touchdown uh, iowa uh, yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. you know what's your signature you, a lot of times it's for three yeah you know? i don't i don't think i really have one okay. and here's why let me <laughs> explain why because everyone's different mm -hmm. and, and you put your personality into it but Paul James, Coach Paul James, <laughs> taught me when I first started PA announcing that less is more. Yep. And if you don't see it, don't say it. And so there are a lot of PA announcers that are, are very, you know, mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I feel my job is not to make the, not to make myself the spotlight. I am there to highlight the players and the team. So I am much more... I don't want to say black and white because, you know, you do hype up the crowd. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite like that. But I would say the most, the most one I get the most comments on is at field hockey. Because at field hockey, when we score a goal, we throw out a free T-shirt. Okay. So yep. I say, <clears throat> you ready? Yep, yep, yep. And that's a Hawkeye goal! And a free t-shirt! Make some noise! <laughs> so that's probably it. Okay. <laughs> oh, good deal. <laughs> you asked. Yeah, I, oh, I know, and I, I, I wanted, I wanted, because it seems like there's at least, again, thank you, because I think it is all about the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't, it is kind of annoying when, you know, somebody's talking. It's like, wait a minute, they're, you know, the play's starting again. Right, right. Shh. You know, like, I want to watch the game. And, but, so, no, that's awesome. And I, anytime they ask, I love announcing the kids' names for mm -hmm. a high school basketball game. And yes. Try to put a little flair into it. Yes. But, uh, and then be quiet. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I do. Like, for Iowa women's basketball, of course, you know, everyone knows that, you know, you put more, a little more. Mm -hmm. I want to say a little more. I guess you do the whole game, but. Um, when you do the starting lineups, that's when everybody's actually listening to you. Mm -hmm. You know, not always during the game does everyone yeah. listen to the PA announcer. Mm -hmm. I get that. Um, but during st starting lineups, they do. And so, you know, I try to, number one, make sure I pronounce the name correctly. Yes. That is so huge. And that's really, that's my number one job. Yeah. I was you like, know? ask the SID, yeah. you know, ask the other coach. Ask the kid if you can. Yeah. yeah. Because there's been times, so here's a good story for okay. you. I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> okay. No, so a couple great. years ago, I did the um, Iowa, or actually the Big Ten Men's Tennis Tournament. Oh, and unbeknownst to me at the time, because I'm not a huge tennis person, there are a lot of um, people from the Eastern Bloc countries. Mm -hmm. And oh, sometimes yeah. those names can be a bit of a challenge. And so I asked the SID, how do you pronounce this gentleman's name? He's like, uh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> and so then I asked the coach. This happens a lot. Yes, the coach. Coaches don't know. <laughs> you know, they just don't. They don't don't, don't ask the coach. Right. Um, so then I just said, okay, point him out to me. Which guy is he? <laughs> and so they pointed him out to me. And so I just went and asked him. And so I don't know if he was teasing with me or not, but he said, my name is Vuk Budic. I said, okay. So when I announced his name, I said, Vuk Budic. <laughs> Just like that. So I don't know if they were making fun of me, but you know what? The joke was on him. Exactly. Because if you tell me how to pronounce it, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, that, that's so good. Oh, that's, any other great like stories like that? That's, uh, that's good stuff. Let's see. Um, you know, the, the thing for me is, is a lot of times, especially at high school games, and anybody who's announced at a high school game or, or a youth tournament or something like that, you will hear this where, where – you think you're pronouncing it correctly because the coaches told you that's how you pronounced mm -hmm. it and you write it down phonetically. Mm -hmm. um, and even though you go over it in your mind 45 times yes. before you say it, when it comes out of your mouth, it doesn't always come out correctly. And 
then are you hear you hear people in the background going <laughs> and and so i always just turn around before the game and say look i'm doing my best here mm-hmm. if i don't pronounce it correctly tell me come tell me mm-hmm. don't don't sit there and laugh at me or or okay. get irritated by it come tell me um so there's there's challenging names that the first time you say them you go you kind of trip over them um but then you know then they get easier so a couple that i can think of off the top of my head um, there's a team, so I also do national junior college um, volleyball championships. Okay. And there's a big team out of Arkansas that's always very, very good every year. And they have um, kids from Italy, kids from, um, I think it was like Yugoslavia, a lot of the Eastern yeah. Bloc countries. Again, these, these are probably the most difficult names for us as Americans. There's lots of consonants in there. Um, and I'd asked the coach, and he looked at me like I had horns coming on my head. He's like, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> so then I finally found somebody who did. Um, but those, some of the Hawaiian names, when you first look at the oh, Hawaiian yes, names. with you, all the apostrophes. Yeah, and, and lots of vowels. Yes. <laughs> you kind of, your eyes get big, but then once you say them, you know, they're okay. Um, but with field hockey, I've gotten very good at the Dutch names. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of field hockey players from the Netherlands um, and uh, Belgium, and so that I've gotten better with the Dutch names. Speaking of pronouncing names, you know, the Olympics coming up, mm-hmm. and uh, how much do you guys think they practice all those names? Well, because sometimes when they, they're, they're pretty flawless. Yeah. Uh, really, on like NBC or yeah. whatever. It depends on the sport. Um, and it depends on the amount of time you have for preparation. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you've got multiple games with different teams, that could be a, a bit of a challenge. But you know, like I said, that's that's your number, kind of your number one job mm-hmm. is to not mess up somebody's name. So what I do, for example, if I know I'm doing a basketball game, I go out and pull the rosters and, and start pronouncing them. And a lot of times the, there will be like a little ear. If you go out and look at any college roster, mm-hmm. There'll be a little ear next to it, and they'll, that'll be the oh, pronunciation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes um, the athletic department will send me like an audio file. And what oh, I love cool. is there's some schools that actually have the, the student athlete standing in front of a camera saying their name, which I love that because then oh. you just mimic that. Uh-huh. Um, but other things I've had to do are Google searches on how to pronounce, like if I find a Irish name, for example, which is oftentimes spelled very differently than the way it's pronounced. Um, there's, you can do a Google search on how to pronounce it, mm-hmm. and then at least you have a start. Okay. And then what I do is I take the roster and I like to, I like to read it and have them correct me, because if yes. they read it, yep. I, I, you know, it's you hear it different yep. than you say it, mm-hmm. and so I always like to say it first and have them correct me. But but to answer your question, it you know for me it could be up to a week in advance okay. if I have that time that kind of prep time. Oh, good, awesome. Um, I, I guess I don't really have much more. I mean, I, I'll think of more. But what's your question, Steve? I was going to ask. It's it's funny because you know we live here in small town Sigourney, and Sigourney has actually produced several. <laughs> announcing broadcasting names over the last you know 30 years or so mm-hmm. I, I had a stint in radio doing what I'm doing now uh, Bob James of course just wrapped up a Hall of Fame radio career with Kay Hawk and Cedar Rapids and now we've got you doing your thing so it's just it's kind of incredible that a town of 2,000 people over the years has has produced you know a few a few kind of standout broadcast announcers well i'm i'm happy to be included in that thank you very much um but you know i talk about just how small town security has produced not just in sports and not just announcing some amazing people you know it for such a small town we have really branched out um a lot of notable people but yet also we're still connected you know Mm -hmm. we're still we're still connected not only to the hometown but just to the whole area you know Mm -hmm. i think of i you know knew a lot of people in kyoto i hung out in kyoto Mm -hmm. a lot when i was in high school (laughs) Um, so, you know, or EV or whatever, I just feel a connection whenever I'm doing sports like it, it, for the athletic union, the girls athletic union, and there's a Sigourney team or a Kyoto team or, or the officials, um, you know, Ross Hemsley yes. and Steve Klein, those guys are oftentimes at state tournament, you know, it's like, oh, those, that's yeah. my people, you yeah. know, the, <laughs> that's my team. <laughs> and I was also thinking, and, and that's funny because, you know, I've reached out to you, Gina, before, uh, when I was in radio, I was like, hey, Gina, you want to do a game? Or, you know, it didn't work out. But yeah. uh, 
I'll still be hitting you up occasionally. Here okay. <laughs> Steve Shuttler Media. I, in fact, I was thinking maybe the two of you, I, I should get you two to uh, team up and do some oh. sort of sport. I don't know what, this is, but I'm just, I'm just winging it right now. But I think that would be, be a fun. lot of fun. I'm not a very fun. good play-by-play person. You know, I've never tried play-by-play, and I've always wanted to. So there you go. <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> All right. See, this is saying yes, people. This yes. is putting yourself out there. I've never done it, but I, I thought, well, you know, I could probably do that. You, you can do that. Maybe. <laughs> I'd have to practice a lot to do play-by-play. Yeah, so so I'm going to transition back here and ask you a question. Oh, okay. So we mentioned it at the top of the broadcast. Mm-hmm. Last night was Caitlin Clark's uh, debut with the Indiana Fever in that preseason uh, exhibition game, mm-hmm. I guess, uh, in Dallas. Um, and I thought, once again, as she always does, she delivered. She Even delivered. with all that pressure on her, she delivered. How about the little step back when uh, Sheldon fell down? I was like, oh, that looks familiar. That, Ohio State. Uh-huh. Ah. That was all over social media this <laughs> yes. morning, at least what I saw yeah. is that particular particular <laughs> picture. But, yeah, how about that? I was – it's been – so now I'll tell you another okay. some more stories. Okay. okay. All right, you That's can fine. just stop me because I'm a no, talker, as no, you can it's, tell. Hey, it's we raining, have no time so, limit. Okay. It's just, just say, yeah, and it's raining out. Everybody's so, yeah. inside watching us. <laughs> so right? <laughs> this year, um, I was honored to be on the table crew for Iowa Women's Basketball. And what that means is you're kind of the backup for everything. And so, um, of course, mainly I was there as the backup PA announcer, mm-hmm. you know, if, if needed. But I also learned how to keep the book and score. Yes. Um, I learned how to be the officials liaison. Um, And then, honestly, just having a front row seat to this historicness Mm -hmm. um, has has been amazing. And so before one of the games that I was announcing, Caitlin Clark always has this um, thing where she comes up and she, Mm -hmm. you know, fist bumps everyone. And she came up and she gave me a fist bump and she started walking away. And I said, hey, Caitlin, she turned around and I just said, thank you. Thank you for all of this. And she just smiled. And I thought. So it gets me choked yeah. up because it's like it's such a big deal. Um, and then my my favorite player, mm-hmm. nothing against Caitlin because she's amazing and she's done amazing thing for, mm-hmm. things for women. But I'm a Kate Martin fan. Oh, gosh, yes. Kate Martin. Yes. She worked field hockey with us oh. <laughs> for several years because she was in the sports management or sports recreation. I get them confused. Um, or marketing. I don't know which one. Um, department one year. I think it was when she was a sophomore maybe or junior. Um, Anyway, she worked with us, and when I did that call for the goal, Uh she was the t-shirt thrower, (laughs) Um, but she also sat next to me and was the DJ, played music, so I got (laughs) to know Kate really well, Mm -hmm. and all the stories that you read about Kate, about being a good person, um, are 100% accurate, and all all the good things that are happening to her, I am so happy for her I think she'll make the team. I hope she does, because like I said, USA Volleyball is in Vegas this summer, and if she makes the team and the Aces are in town, mm-hmm. you know I'm going. Oh, heck yes. <laughs> but I would always fist bump Kate before every single game. We that was our that was our jam. I became a Sydney fan. Yo, talk about what? stepping up. And I'm just telling you, doing and knowing all your the role, things. accepting your role. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh. you could think about she could start for how many other oh, teams? Everybody. But she just really stepped up, knew her role, and did what she did for the team. And then Hannah, Hannah Stolke. Yes. So I've known Hannah. I was going to say, probably, she's a Wash She was born. (laughs) Um, Her mother, I knew her mother when she played at Wash. (laughs) And so seeing Hannah blossom and, and, you know, I'm a power puffs person. I love it when she wears her hair like that. But I have probably two or three of those Hannah's T-shirts. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but, But just being able to see... For those that that have been to the games and in those that have not and watch them on TV, when that hype video starts and 15,000 people stand up and they're going nuts, whether I'm announcing or not, um, I the, just the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I just I get tears in my eyes every single time um, because it's just so awesome. And then turning to Iowa State. Oh, yes. What? Oh. I did not expect that at all. Uh, no. Who did? I, I thought this is the year. We're just going to have to, you know, take our lumps. Um, but um, they're freshmen. And then they're getting the, you know, the transfer in from Truman State. They just shot lights out. And, yeah. Uh, I'm a huge Audie Crooks oh, fan. Huge Audie Crooks fan. Huge Addie Brown. Yeah. Um, well, and even Kelsey Jones. I thought yeah. in the Big 12, 
uh, semifinal game, she she really stepped up. It was a huge spark. Yeah, she, absolutely. When they agree. were down twenty to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and she had a huge spark and just that was the difference in the game. Yeah, her hitting a couple shots and getting a steal. And um, anyway, I and I went to you know I hung out with them at the practice facility and all that stuff and got a picture taken with Audie mm -hmm. and she, talking about a good kid. I was just gonna say that. So <laughs> I've known Audie such a good kid from state basketball. You know because mm -hmm. her Bishop Garrigan mm -hmm. team was there every year and she was always so kind. I have a picture with her as well. Um, and I'm so happy to see how she's transitioned mm -hmm. because people were unsure. Mm -hmm. I mean, her, her body type yeah. isn't what you would normally expect. And that's another, let's say, disadvantage of being a female is that they're, that's all they're talking yep, about. Exactly. But and if you it's know a guy, what? they call him big country yeah. and it's, you know, it's, it's cool. But for a female, it's like, oh my gosh, how'd yeah. she run up and down the court? And, and she's showing them. And I oh. love it. I yes. love it when people question you and then you show up. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, Audie, yep. Sid, yep. everybody. You know, they, they're they unsure about you. You just show up and said, let me let me just show you what I can do. I tell you what, the Iowa State-Stanford game, that was an instant classic. Oh my gosh. It was one of the best games I, I have watched in a long, 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 long time. And just like Stanford pull ahead, you know, by four, and then boom, Iowa State hit a big three. It was just like all the time just... Well, and, and Stanford, you think yeah. blue blood team, you think, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Tara Vanderveer. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you know, and the little girl in me or the younger woman in me that watched these blue blood teams, UConn, mm -hmm. and then Iowa beats them, you know, Stanford, oh, Iowa State beats them. I mean, talk about being proud to be yeah. from Iowa because yeah. of women's basketball. Come on. And then the, all the sports shows, all the talk is Caitlin Clark and Audie Crooks. I know. And it's, it's, like, mean, it's like two yes. Iowa high school girls. Mm -hmm. And and Audie from tiny little, you know, Bishop Garrigan. Mm -hmm. And and they are all over the national news. That's yeah. that's just so cool. Yeah. I, it, yeah. Power, <laughs> power to the woman. Well, it's true. <laughs> it's true. And I, I probably sound like that, you yeah, know. Well, no, but it's There's it's a lot true. of men who support us as well. And we wouldn't be who we're at mm -hmm. without that support. And those 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 men who advocate for the women. One of my favorite sayings. There's a lot of good girl dads out there. Yeah, there are. A lot of good girl dads. There are. And and one of my favorite sayings for women, and, and I feel like we kind of fall into this, is empowered women empower women. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're starting to see that a lot. I, I was hoping my shirt was in, but it's on back order. That T-shirt oh. that says everyone watches women's sports. Yep. Um, I've got another one that says support women in sports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not trying to take over. No. We just want to be, let's just be in the game. Yeah, exactly. Let's be in the game. And that's how I grew up. It's like I played baseball with the boys. You know, in Westchester, there wasn't enough girls to have a softball team. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, I, every, it was Sandlot mm. every day in the summer mm -hmm. and we didn't have a pool. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, and so anyway, yeah, I'm just, I'm a, very excited. And again, not to, and I love men's basketball and I love watching football. Yeah. Oh, I I'm mean, a huge I have football no, person. Yeah. Oh, huge. No problem with that either. So let's just all play. Everybody yeah. gets to play. Everybody and everybody support one another. Yes. Let's, let's not attack each other. Let's support one another. Thank you. Cause you know, the big Iowa State thing. It's like, first of all, I grew up a Hawkeye, so yes, I love the Hawks. But I went to Iowa State, so yes, I love Iowa State. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why we can't like each other. Like, if they're not playing each other. Agreed. And I like Drake, and I like you and yep, I. I and do too. Let's just go for Central and Simpson mm -hmm. and Wartburg and cheer them all on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, and let's so let's get into this a little bit. There's, okay. the whole, <laughs> there's the whole back and forth of the different, not just Iowa and Iowa State, but if we look at you know, women's basketball, there's the LSU, Iowa, oh, yeah. there's the whole thing. And, and the, the people that say the negative things, I mean, you can say negative things at home, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, but these are student athletes and not only that, they're humans, they're people. Mm -hmm. So you don't, and they're kids. Why, why really? attack? Mm -hmm. Why? Like you were talking about, you know, Audi and, mm -hmm. and I don't get it. Yeah. Why be mean? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you can support your team by being positive with your team without having to tear down the other team or being negative to them. So that's, that's a big thing. You know, when you're working at the bench, you mm -hmm. hear people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you hear people in the crowd. I, I mean, you know that from yeah. coaching and it's just like, don't. No. Yeah. And you look up fan, you know, sports fan, um, in the dictionary and it says positive supporter. Absolutely. So I, yeah, exactly. That's why I don't like when they chant air ball. Yeah. It's like, if you can tell me you've never, ever shot an air ball in your life, 
then you can chant that. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you haven't. Um, and usually it makes the person mad. And they go exactly down and start going say. off. Exactly. What sure. I was say. They just scored 10 points in a row. Thanks. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, don't. Or, or the officials, getting on the officials. What's that oh, going to do? Oh, my gosh. Have you ever? So, Jenny, we have both been in sports for, <laughs> I don't know, 40, 50 years, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever seen an official change a call because somebody's parent in the stands was yelling at him ever? Uh, no. And that's Never. why I tell the every kid I've ever coached is like, when that whistle is blown, you are not going to change the call. Yeah. So why complain about it? Yeah. Don't worry. Me as the coach, I'll remind him if I don't agree with the call. Right. Um, and then I'll let it go. Some mm -hmm. coaches just keep. Mm -hmm. It's like the play's over. Yeah. Tell him you didn't agree. Move and on. And then move on. Yeah. So it's like, no, I've never. And actually, I've felt over the years that it's helped my team. And maybe we've gotten calls down the stretch because my kids sprint out the door when the ball rolls all the way out, you know, and gets the ball yes. and gives it to the official. Yes. Or they just, you know, have a, okay, well, I traveled. Give the ball to the official. Yeah. You know, like, well, I did it. Which, you know, that upsets me about Caitlin. Well, but but I, know, I understand know. the competitiveness. I know. Um, yeah, it actually helps your team when you're friendly. Like just softball. The catcher chats with the umpire the entire time. You know, that helps yeah. the team. Now, I'm not saying they're going to give you favorable calls, but if it's close either way, you probably will yeah. have a little advantage. Yeah, and, and it translates into life, too. It I mean, so, so, you, so okay, I, I didn't get that one. I'll yeah. go back and get the next one, yes. or I'll learn from that. Mm -hmm. I made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You make a mistake, you learn from it, you move on. The next play is more important. That's right. I mean, that play's over. You can't go back. So, so what, yeah. play for the next one. That's the, that's the hardest thing for me, sitting at the table, um, or, or at least in basketball, because mm -hmm. the crowd is closer mm -hmm. to you, is to listen to those, those negative comments. And you just, it takes everything I have not to turn around and just give it the old stink eye. Yeah. You know, it's, that's <laughs> not my job. It's not my role. But it's yeah. like, mm, mm -hmm. man, that's, that's, a, that's a, you know, 19-year-old kid, you mm -hmm. know, or 19-year-old young adult, young mm -hmm. woman, young man. You don't, you don't need that. Well, and my other philosophy on that is until you've played in front of 20,000 people, you're telling me you're not going to be nervous. Absolutely. You're not going to make mistakes. And then you have to go back the next day and watch game film. Yeah. And see that mistake all over again. Mm -hmm. Or now in the days of social media, you're going to see that mistake. Absolutely. Over and over and over again. So it, Grandpa Joe doesn't need to be yelling from the stands. I know... At that instant that I made a mistake. Yeah. I don't need people telling me. Right, right. So and, and leave it alone. And how strong must these athletes be to touch on what you just said with social media right now, mm -hmm. to, to see that over and over again, but then to still be like, you know what? Next play. Yep. You know, uh, kudos to them. Mm -hmm. that they're very, they have to be very strong. It well, has to be tough. Well, that Kent State player that thought they scored to go ahead, but he thought they were down one, and so he fouls. Mm. And that, and then the guy went, goes and makes two free throws. That made Kent State not make the NCAA tournament. Oh man! So right there, I mean, just people just bashing. Exactly, a 20-year-old student athlete, and he, I guarantee, there's nobody that feels worse than him. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So it's like, le let the kid go. Yeah. Let him go. Yep. Agreed. But Steve, anything? Yes. Let's do some advertising. Okay. Uh, let's let's take a look at this from our host brothers market here in downtown Sigourney. Their digital deals of the week. Again, download the digital app and take advantage of these and many more deals going on, including uh, some great deals on brothers market water, uh, Rotel tomatoes, and Frito Lay Tostitos. Get some great deals going on there with the app from brothers market and uh you can also uh do uh, some shopping at shopbrothersmarket.com savings made simple with digital coupons you can earn rewards deal of the week shopping deals again get the app it's a smart way to shop it's the brothers market app digital app get that on your phone and get a bunch of great deals let's go back to uh jenny hobbs and gina rogers all right we're gonna do a segment called this or that so i'm gonna give you a choice okay. you just whatever comes to your mind first all right okay and some of these i do every week so they're just on the list i put in always a couple special for my guest okay okay <laughs> so we'll just start out like we always do TikTok or instagram instagram 
uh, Facebook or Snapchat? Uh, Facebook. I'm old. I know. I know. Me too. <laughs> Facebook. Um, radio or TV? <sighs> so I have to explain this one. Okay. <laughs> a lot of times when I'm watching a TV game, especially football, I will turn off the audio on the TV and listen to the radio. So I'm still kind of a radio girl at mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the way radio calls the game. So, but I like seeing what's happening. Yes. Um, but if you've got good announcers on the radio and they're, they're laying it out for you, I'm going to go radio. Okay. I, and I, if I'm stuck somewhere and I have to drive home and I'm, you know, listening to a game, I, I can envision myself there. They do yeah, such a good me job. Too. Me too. Um, well, the famous Iowa catch to win, uh, was it the Outback Bowl that year or what? Anyway, in Orlando. Was. Tate to Holloway. Yes, Tate to Holloway. Um, and it was icy out. And I was coming back from Ames and I got stuck in traffic and I wasn't home yet. So I was by, by basically Southeast Polk High School <laughs> when that was all going down. And just listening to Dolph and those guys going, the clock is yeah. running. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, call a timeout or yeah. Call it. Yeah. Yeah. Hike it. <laughs> you know, like, oh my God. I was like trying to stay on the road. It's icy. I'm like, oh my God. So, it, yeah. They can, it's pretty fun. Uh, jeans or sweatpants? Oh, sweatpants, 100%. <laughs> um, and I kind of know the answer, but I always know the answer to this first. Hawkeyes or cyclones? Well, I'm going to refer back to you. Okay. <laughs> so, before I started working at Iowa, I was more of a cyclone fan. And of course, I was a huge Alabama fan because that's where I'm from. Um, but now since I work for the University of Iowa and I got to know the people and the athletes that I'm going to say, go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> um, so then <laughs> on the side, that side, Drake or you and I? Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to have to go both. I, I'm equal on both of yeah. those. I had some former players at you and I. Um, and then, you know, Drake, a lot of people I work with are Drake. Both. I'm going to go both. Okay. I can't make a choice. Uh, driver or shotgun? Oh, 100% driver. Trip. 100% driver. 100%. Uh, math or science? Science. Oh, that a girl. Small town or big city? Um, I There's good things about both. Um, but obviously, I'm more of a small town person. <laughs> Steak or a good burger? Steak. <laughs> if you can afford it. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> um, well, then let's go. Medium, rare, or well done? Ah. Uh, or I like between. medium well. Oh, okay. I like, I'm in between. Okay. Yeah, I'm in between. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you watch these shows, but I was trying to think of something different last okay. night. American Idol or America's Got Talent? I don't watch either of those shows. I, I don't watch much TV, actually. Oh, well, that's good for yeah, you. That's good. I don't watch much TV. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say America's Got Talent because it's a wide variety of okay. people. Um, football or basketball? Your favorite sport? Basketball, 100%. <laughs> cat or dog? Um, I'm probably more cat. Yeah, I've had both, but okay. probably more cat. <laughs> Shopping now, online or in the store? Online. <laughs> Me too. Vacation destinations, beach or mountains? You know, I ask myself this question a lot. <laughs> and, and again... I am right down the middle. I like I like both. <laughs> yeah. I, so so I'm a Libra. So okay. I can see both sides. Okay. And so it comes out in my personality a lot. So <laughs> both. <laughs> um, now, if you were to stop by the local pizza ranch, uh -huh. do you, would you more likely get chicken or pizza? Pizza. <laughs> pizza. Reese's or Reese's peanut butter cup or Snickers. Reese's. Okay. And then you know we're, we're all getting up there in age. So I suppose we need to think about retirement, maybe. Not for a long time for me, but pickleball or golf? Golf. 100% <laughs> golf. I don't think I could play pickleball. My knees are shot. Yeah, I don't think I could either. And and then I would be, I would also probably be a little too aggressive and and then I would probably hurt myself. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. That would be or bad. think that I'm really good and yeah, yeah hurt myself. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'd be <laughs> aggressive competitive, not aggressive good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that ends this or that. All right, do we have our pickums up next? Oh, yes, we do. All right, well, let's take a look at that graphic here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the latest pickums standings are guest pickers still in the lead after last week with 28. 
correct picks. Uh, now, Jenny, you are in second place with 27. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm pulling up the rear. I'm still last place, 25. So I did make up some. <laughs> that's did. sad. I made up ground you last did. week, but I'm still like way behind. Uh, <laughs> so it's 28, 27, 25 during this quote unquote season of the Pickums, <laughs> the the Coach Hobbs season here on uh, the sports section. So uh, what do we got for games this week, Jenny? All right, again, this it's a tough time of year. It's all pro sports, pretty much. But the first game, uh, it's we're in the NBA. Minnesota Timberwolves are at the Denver Nuggets. Now, this is game one of the Western semifinals. So they both won their first round games. This is round two, um, game one at Denver. Okay, so let me preface this by saying, <laughs> Steve, I'm going to challenge you for the bottom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just so you know, I don't watch, the only pro sports I watch are, are the NFL. That's all I watch is football. So with that being said, I'm going to go Timberwolves. Timberwolves. I'm going to go Nuggets. Again, you know, yeah. Whenever I think of Denver, I, I go back to like the 90s and I think of Dikembe Mutombo yeah. and his finger wagging. Not in my house. <laughs> uh, and I probably haven't really watched the NBA since then. Um, but I know they, they got a good team, obviously. I'll go Denver. All right. Uh, game two uh, on our list is NBA again. This time it's still the first round, but it's Orlando Magic. At the Cleveland Cavaliers, game seven. So this is for to move on. Um, again, Orlando at Cleveland, game seven. So the series is tied 3-3. So again, not an NBA person because <laughs> I was a high school coach and I can't, yeah, I just can't do it. I can't I'm watch. sorry. I can't either. Um, but just because the women's final four was there this year, I'm going to go Cleveland. I'm going to go Cleveland just because they're the home team. And it's game seven. Okay. That's it. And I'll like go it. Orlando since you both went Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that worked well for him last week. Yeah. <laughs> week before, not so much, but last week it worked well for him. Yeah. Um, now let's go to some Major League Baseball. Uh, the Milwaukee Brewers are at the Chicago Cubs. Maybe. I mean, it might Fly be Fly the W. Fly the W. I'm <laughs> going Cubs. <laughs> ah, let's go Cubbies. Well, then Milwaukee, <laughs> you guys are making it easy. <laughs> I'm either going to make great strides this week or else I'm really going to be in the basement. Uh, okay, so now hockey, National League hockey. Okay. Game seven. All right. So it's tied. Uh, I think it's tied 2-2. Two, two. Um, anyway, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking about this. They spell Leafs like not leaves. Yeah. You know, like not plural leaves, it's just leaves with an S. Well, they're Canadians. Okay, that's so. Okay, you know, that's okay. how that works. I was like, I was just thinking. <laughs> hmm. I noticed that a couple weeks ago, and I was typing that out, going, "Well, I guess." Um, yeah. So, Toronto Maple Leafs at the Boston Bruins in the Garden, uh, Game Seven. Just in the Garden. That would be <laughs> another place I'd love to announce sometime. So I'm just gonna go. Yeah, in the Garden. Okay. Home team. Home team. Well, now I'm gonna have. Since I've been agreeing with Gina the entire time, I guess I need to go against the grain. And I hate to do it, but I'm going to go Maple Leaves. Because I'm not uh, very good at English either, so. <laughs> I know nothing about hockey. Boston. That's, okay. that's one. Of, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Boston. Now, <laughs> so let's do a little NCAA baseball. Okay. We have number two, Arkansas, mm -hmm. versus number eight, Kentucky and when I clicked on it it went I don't know where it's at I don't know if it's Arkansas or it's at Kentucky but number two versus number eight in the SEC yeah so um I feel like I feel like Kentucky's on a roll right now you know Kenny Brooks just transferred there to be the women's basketball coach from Virginia Tech Georgia Amor one of my favorite players yes. from Virginia Tech also just transferred yes. to Kentucky um, so because of nothing baseball related and all women's basketball related, I'm going Kentucky. And, you know, I really like their hire for the men's basketball job too. Yeah. Pope from BYU. Okay. Get him out of the big 12. Yeah. Cause he's an excellent coach and he played at Kentucky. So did you see that when they announced him? I did not see he played on a national championship team with like Jamal Mash. I mean, just studs. So they walked into the arena, the national championship team from that oh. year back in the day and they all walked in and the place awesome. rump arena was full 
So they're getting excited, but I'm going to have to go Arkansas because this is a sad story, but I have a cousin who is not in good shape. He had a massive heart attack, lives in Fayetteville. And Fayetteville. Oh, sorry. sorry. Southern Fayetteville. girl here. Yeah. Fayetteville. My little boo. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have to go Arkansas. And okay. they're number two, so I'll, I'll go higher seed. I'll s- guess Arkansas. <laughs> Sue, call the pigs, <laughs> call the pigs. <laughs> Again, uh, I go back to way back to whenever I think Arkansas, I think Nolan Richardson from basketball. Oh, yes. 40 minutes of hell. Yeah. And, and I used to have Arkansas t-shirts on as a kid, and I used to call them Arky pigs. Okay. That's what well, I call that, them. That seems Arky pigs. valid. And then finish it up with some NCAA softball. Okay. Uh, big game today. Number two, Oklahoma mm-hmm. versus number four, Oklahoma State. So it's softball bedlam. It's at Oklahoma, but I will, since I looked this up and out, I'll give you a little insider information. I will say Oklahoma State won last night. Yeah. So this is game two of the series. Um, anyway, Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. I'm going Oklahoma. Just be, their their resume, their their history, their years, they're at home, and especially if they lost last night. Yes. Yeah, that's, I'm going Oklahoma. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm going OU. Um, well, then Oklahoma State. <laughs> Oklahoma State it is. Cowpokes. <laughs> All right, and that, that end, that's our pick for the week. All right, and I think that does it for our show. Gina, it's been great having you on this week. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so excited you got to make it. And, uh, of course, we'll be doing this again next week uh, at 8 a.m., live from Brothers Market here again in downtown Sigourney, Sigourney at 118 South Main Street. Give them a call at 641-622-2191. Download the Brothers Market digital app. And, uh, yeah, otherwise we'll see you next Saturday here on the sports section, live from Brothers Market on Steve Shetler Media.